With the Golden Globes out of the way, it's time for the adults to enter the room as the Oscars looms on the horizon. If you're one of the few proud owners of a cable package still, you can watch this whole event take place on Sunday, March 10th. Uh, the rest of us who stream things, you know, we're gonna try. We're gonna try to find it. Maybe I'll even try live streaming it Sunday and then have YouTube hit me with 45 different copyright claims and a bunch of flags and get my channel taken down. <laughs> That's the dream. You know what's not the dream though? The 10 shocking, terrible things that took place during the nomination process. 10 egregious, unforgivable snubs or just random weird choices for nominations took place today and I wanna talk about them. So strap in, I have a top 10 list for you. Oh, <laughs> it's never been done on YouTube. In the number 10 spot is Jake Gyllenhaal's best actor snub for Nightcrawler in 2014. I'm still not over it. He acted his ass off in that film. It was a gritty, grounded, fantastic performance from a weirdo character Gyllenhaal's portraying. I loved it. It's a great movie. It was a great acting performance. He was snubbed. All right, now on to the real ones. At number, that counts though, that's number 10. At number nine. Oppenheimer set to make history as it will be in a top contender spot for the most Oscars ever won, ever. With a whopping 13 nominations, it's Oppenheimer's to lose. And I do honestly kind of hope it loses in this department, which is Best Supporting Actress, going to Emily Blunt. If I could be Emily Blunt with you, I think this actress is great. I love her, I celebrate her entire catalog. But in Oppenheimer, a movie that is phenomenal, I thought she was the weakest link in this fence. I thought her performance felt off from everyone else's. It felt out of place. She looked a little odd too, uh, like she had some recent face creams added or a facelift or I, I don't know what's going on, but something was just off with her in this movie. So to put her in a best supporting actress category, it feels like a courtesy because they have so many other noms already. There were some fantastic animated films that came out this year. And then there was also The Boy and the Heron, a movie that is of course up for best animated film along with Elemental and a few others. I did not care for that movie. Obviously it looks wonderful, but I thought the story felt very flat. It seemed all over the place with the messages and the symbolism. I get that it's Studio Ghibli. I get this is the director's last hurrah. So you almost put it up there as a courtesy, but I just don't go for that. I don't play that way. I thought Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem had fantastic visuals and it was a better movie. It was one that was engaging for all members of the family, young and old. The Boy and the Heron felt like it was some personal project that was only going to be connecting with the dude that made it. So I think you put that one out, you throw Ninja Turtles, and I know it sounds silly because one of them is this mystical, beautiful, artsy film, a tale of a boy trying to come to terms with his life, and another is for Mutant Ninja Turtles fighting bad guys, but I don't give a crap. If Barbie can be up for eight nominations, Ninja Turtles can be up for Best Animated. Let's continue. To show what an incredibly fair and unbiased person I am, I have Asteroid City up here for worst snub in production. I don't even really like Asteroid City. I thought the movie was a little too out there. It didn't really hit any of the notes it was going for. Not awful by any means, but really didn't work for me. Wes Anderson is very hit or miss in my book, and this was a big miss. But when it came to the visual look, the set design, the costumes and everything, perfect. Why is this not up for production design? I don't understand. It just seemed like a no-brainer. This is production design 101 here. It was a very unique setting. It's the only other movie besides Barbie that really felt different from most of the other competition. Uh, a massive miss, I think. Indiana Bones and the Dial of Destiny is not a good movie. It's just kind of a pointless affair all around. And John Williams, you know, again, it's another one of those last hurrah sort of situations. So they have him on here for musical score. Williams has won a million times over. It's not like he's due for a win. He doesn't need the W. 
And I didn't find the music in this one to be very captivating, especially when there was four other Indiana Jones movies that have better soundtracks. N not to mention the fact that he did Jaws, Hedwig's theme in Harry Potter. He's got Star Wars under his belt. John Williams is an absolute legend. Putting him on here for the sake of it seems like what they did. I, I think that there's other movies though that could have been put in this position. Williams could have just rode off into the sunset with Indy on this one. If anyone is familiar with getting snubbed at the Oscars, it's Leonardo DiCaprio, the man lives and breathes it. Eventually getting a courtesy win for The Revenant, uh, a movie that was, I, I love that film, obviously, and I thought DiCaprio was great in it, but he's done far better performances in the past. It felt like a Denzel Washington award at this point, another guy who made so many great movies and then finally they caved and gave him one for a lesser performance. And now here we are again in 2024 with the Killers of the Flower Moon, Ernest Burkhart's his character, and he's gone. He's MIA from the list. Get DiCaprio in here. What is going on over there? Most people that I've talked to, in my head, they're, they're made up people, they really like the holdovers. I really like the holdovers, my family really like the holdovers. So why in the hell is Alexander Payne being held over for best director? The movie was terrific, it was a breath of fresh air, when every film coming out now seems to be like, look at me, look how different I am, I'm subverting expectations, or I'm going away you didn't want me to. That's redundant, that's kind of what subverting expectations is. The holdovers is, is a tried and true formulaic picture done so well, you can't help but fall in love with it. And I know, I say formulaic, it sounds like that's a bad thing. Well, no, we have a formula for a reason. It works. And more often than not now, it seems, movies are trying to get away from that, the whole beginning, middle, and end. Instead, they just have a mishmash of different ideas and concepts that are half-assed and, and half-thought out. And sometimes, there's not even a conclusion. Sometimes it's a to be continued after watching a three hour film. That's not satisfying. The holdovers, however, very much was. And so it's, it's very sad to see that he's not being recognized for that. Earlier in this one way conversation, I pointed out that Barbie is up for a bunch of awards, eight nominations, yet Margot Robbie, MIA, not in the best actress category, even though her co-star, Ken, AKA Ryan Gosling, he's very much up for best supporting actor. Baby Goose is on the ticket. Why the hell isn't Margot Robbie? It's her movie. And she does a dynamite job. Not only is she smokingly hot as Barbie, go figure, right? She looks the part, but she also acts her ass off. She's crying, she's giggling, she's running the whole gamut of emotions. And there's subtle ones too. It's not over the top. It is a subdued performance. It's, it's very pared back when it needs to be. I thought she was just lovely in this movie and she really is the thing that carries the whole damn picture. So why is she missing? It makes no sense. Well, it makes no sense to us common folk. But if you're the Academy, it fits right in with my next pick. Let me see if I can wrap my balls around this. Barbie is up for best picture but not up for best director? What? How is Greta Gerwig getting snubbed again? This makes no sense. The movie doesn't work without the director attached to it. She's the one leading the charge. She's the one that's helping come up with the visual style, the way the actors are performing, the way the music is entrenched into the film, the way everything flows. How can you leave Greta Gerwig off Best Director? It makes no sense. The only thing more egregious on this list than the previous stated ones is that freaking Iron Claw, the A24 produced movie, is nowhere to be found anywhere. Someone dropped the ball over there at A24 not getting this thing noticed because I thought Iron Claw was not only a phenomenal movie last year, it was the movie of last year. It was my number one pick for best picture. The movie has heart, it has emotion, it has drama, it's visually stunning, the actors are fantastic. I just, I can't think of a negative in the movie other than that it ends and I don't get to spend more time with these characters and to see how things really play out for them. It is such a damn fine picture. To not have one single stupid mention at the Academy Awards is absolutely asinine. It's disgusting, it's preposterous, if I could be so bold as to say. 
It's redonkulous. And there you have it, my top 10 most disappointing things to come out of this so-called Academy Awards. It's absolutely despicable. And hey, you know what else is missing? Saltburn. Where's Saltburn? They couldn't find a single pocket for this thing to fall into. It was a good movie. It deserves a little bit of recognition. But whatever, at the end of the day, these are guys just giving each other stickers, okay? Giving each other smiley faces or giving each other an A plus with a circle at the end. Maybe a bonus point gets thrown on. It doesn't matter. We all like what we all like. We love what we love. We hate what we hate. So some of these movies are going to bother you. Some are going to be right up your alley, McBeal. I, for one, don't really even watch awards anymore. I haven't watched them in quite some time. I am still fascinated, of course, because I'm a movie channel. I'm a critic. I love this. It's a hobby for me. It's a passion. And if you enjoy listening to me ramble on for a while, I would love if you subscribe to the channel at Adam Does Movies. Throw a like on there. Hit the notification bell. Comment below with your biggest amazing wow moment of this whole thing. Big snub, big surprise. Throw it in the comments. I'd love to see it. And also, if you really like what I'm doing and you're trying to figure out a way to help support this hobby of mine, join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier, a $10, a $30. It goes up to $100, I think. It's, it's wild over there. Or you can hit the join button on YouTube and become a member that way. You get a bunch of different perks. It's a great time and it helps me in the channel. All right, that's all I got. Hopefully I see you soon. Take care.